Hey guys, so first, yeah, I know I'm holding this at a weird angle. It's on my tripod. Look guys, things are coming along. Let me just show you. These aren't necessarily really gonna stay permanently, but this Anne of a Smart Oven is something I've been wanting forever. And I got my first commercial grade shelf. When I say commercial, I wanna be clear because I don't want nobody thinking nothing crazy. I am not commercially cooking from my home. My kitchen is a little. I have heavy kitchen items that I'm that I store or that I have. Some of these items I'm buying so that when we move in a year and a half, when my lease here is up, or even if I decide to stay here, but luckily I find somewhere else to actually maybe locally run my business because right now I'm more or less just traveling to sell food. Um, then I'll have a lot of things I need, but. Here's what I really wanted to show you. Oh, the corner is clear. Um, my 18 year old son hasn't been here in a while and so I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and make that room into storage. And funny joke, the less space you leave in your home for your adult children to become comfortable in with doors for privacy and such, the less likely they are to stay a long time. So now when people come, they can sleep on the couch, or I'm happy I'm going to get two like them little pull out cat cots that hotels have. But yeah, I'm trying to actually make my house a space where people know you can come here, but you can't live here long term. So anyway, <clears throat> got this shelf. I showed y'all this before, but yeah. And my daughter just got done helping me clean the kitchen again for today. So right now what we're about to do, and I got to hold this in this position because she's where this goes. Right now, what we're about to do is get started for the day with making our shrimp scampi. Hey guys, my hair looks crazy crazy. I have on a comfortable outfit because it's warm outside today. Um, so some of the main things you need for shrimp scampi, shrimp of course, those are in the kitchen, lemon, garlic, I should have got pesto, I forgot. We're gonna do it today without pesto, but normally I would have had pesto. Um, you definitely need white wine and some butter. And in mine, to make it a little different, cause I want a sauce that sticks to the noodles more, um, we're going to use a little plain yogurt to thicken it. And we're also about to dice up some mushrooms cause I want it to be a heartier kind of thing. Also gonna steam some lobster tail, just one per each of us, and some king crab claw clusters to sit on top for plating. So it's gonna be really pretty. I'm about to start slicing up my onions. I'm gonna cook some of them whole sliced in the shrimp. The others I'm going to mince up really, really finely with mushrooms in the food processor to integrate into the sauce. I'm sorry, I said onions instead of lemons. Y'all see them though, you know what I mean lemons, my bad, long day. And I normally cook <laughs> with onion versus lemon. So I'm getting ready to cook, do that and I'll be back to show you that mixture after it's done in the food process. Come back, so I just wanna show you where we're at. First things first, this is not low enough. My daughter's out here hyperventilating because there's a wasp in her room. Anyway, all right. <laughs> we have sliced lemons. It's not going to bother you if you don't bother it. It didn't chase you out here. Sorry, guys. Anyway, so here we have some lemon. And here we have some finely diced, not super fine, but finely diced shallots. And this is a lemon we're going to use to squeeze into the sauce once we begin cooking. But the important part right now that I really wanted you to see was this. Raise up just a little. All right. So in here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take <clears throat> sweet cream, sweet cream salted butter is what I prefer to use. And I basically want to create like a butter. This is gonna be the butter that we end up cooking the shrimp in along with the sauce. 
<clears throat> We're gonna start with one stick. Hopefully that integrates into what we got here and about to explain that next. So in here, what we actually have are the ends of your lemons you sliced up because they'll zest down in here and make the greatest taste you've ever seen. Mushrooms. And the last thing we're going to be putting in is the shallots and just a couple of teaspoons of garlic. All right, so <clears throat> then you just wanna open your garlic up. My hands are slippery, bear with me guys, I'm sorry. Let me get one of my cloths or a paper towel to make it easier for me to open things. My hands are pretty slippery right now. All right. In other fun news, guess what I was able to find a good batch of at the store today? Oxtail. So somewhere in the very, very, very near future, I will be making some of those. I'm not sure when. I have octopus here too. I have an array of just different meats here. So we'll see which one I make. I like a good party dose of garlic and my butters that I make here. <laughs> I'm not gonna salt this. Normally I would have put the black truffle salt in it, but we're not gonna do that. And so I just wanna show you what was in it and I'll be back in a bit. All right, so we added one more stick of butter. And now the final part, this is a sunflower olive oil mix by Ibera. I'm gonna add just a little bit of that. I love Ibera and Baguio. They are such great companies. <clears throat> and here goes my dog won't act crazy. <laughs> That's almost like a pesto within itself. I'm gonna call it a lemon mushroom pesto. All right, let me put the rest of this butter in the fridge so it won't melt. So what I'm about to do next is we're going to, I'm going to use some Mojo wet seasoning and we're going to let our shrimp Marinade. Let me say this. You cannot let shrimp marinate too long because your marinade actually cooks your seafood. So with seafood, you never marinate anything longer than 15 to 20 minutes. Here's your shrimp in your bag. Let me bring you back over here. Here's your shrimp in your bag. Ah, nose. So we're gonna just use a little bit of the badia. They were out of Obey. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on my finger to make sure it's not too spicy. I have bought seafood seasons in the past that were too spicy. That's pretty close to Old Bay, so we might be all right here. All right, get some of that on there. Now I know normally, like especially if a real Italian was making this, there's no way in the world it would have Old Bay in it. But here at Sauce is Best, what I always say, I put a little Maryland into everything. So, you know, just expect that from me. All right, a little salt. The salt's what you gotta be careful with because it's what to cook your seafood if you're not careful. So just a drizzle. 
and then this because mojo mojo is the perfect marinade actually when you're making a scampi because it is a citrus based marinade just make sure you've shaken it up good and you're going to pour some in just enough that you're going to get a good coating of it make sure you seal your bag so stuff doesn't go fine once you start mixing me personally I also hold here when I do this so that I make sure it's not going to be just running everywhere all over the kitchen. Again, do not marinate this for any longer than 15 to 20 minutes or else it will, for all intents and purposes, cook your shrimp. And that's not what you want. All right? While they're marinating, put them in the fridge. I'll be back in a bit. All right, so we're back. You see this very sharp division line I have here? That's so we don't cross contaminate. Seafood on one side, other stuff on the other. That's the good thing about having a big board. And we're going to move that knife out of the way too. And that spoon. And we're going to wash them before we use them again. If you have never seen curved scissors like this, these are seafood shears. And they make doing this a lot easier. So you just want to Cut your back here, because you're opening it up, so it'll be really pretty when you cook them. This one was already kind of cracked. I guess it got broken on the way home. And you just want to pop it out, like so. You're going to get this little piece off that's here, this tougher membrane part. Make sure you get all of that also. And make sure you don't leave any fragments of shells. I always like to run my finger through and make sure I dot them all like so. All right, so I just wanted to show you that real quick. I wanted to show you how to use the seafood shears. I'll show you one more time on my last one here. You just go right underneath this space right here. And you just... Try not to go too deep in because you want to save as much of your meat as possible. Lobster is not cheap. And you just kind of keep going. Get as far back as you can comfortably without messing up the appearance of the lobster. Take it out again. Just pull straight forward there. If you don't like how the front is, snip it. Be sure wash that off too be sure again run your hand through make sure there's no shells in people's food folks and there we have three split down the back lobster tails ready for preparation right now what i'm going to do is go ahead and put them in a sealed bag and slip them back in the fridge till we're ready to use them be back in a bit all right so we're getting there just about 20 minutes has passed and we want to be able to get this shrimp going. So as soon as this stuff, the basil allows me to open it, we'll get this in there first. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do before I even add the shrimp is get the sauce going. I don't even have a big enough soft saucepan for the amount of sauce I'm making. So I have this freeze-dried basil. Fresh basil is always better. However, I did not get any today. So, <clears throat> Of course, I'm going to use some of the other garlic that I have too, but we are going to put some fresh in here also. All right, just like that. We're also going to add a nice drizzle of balsamic. Here's where the moisture is coming because my pan was kind of like dry there. <clears throat> We're also going to add some more of this garlic. Now, let me say this to you. The way I'm making shrimp scampi is not the usual way to make it. If you tune into my cooking, but it smells good as hell in here though. If you tune into how I cook, you'll know I make recipes into my version of a recipe. And it's still slack, so don't be mad at that, as long as it's the way it should be. I'm gonna open that. <clears throat> this is Jilly or Gilly's lemon pepper seasoning. 
we're going to add even more of a citrus taste to it. All right. Now, we're really getting ready to do some interesting stuff here that you don't see many people do. And that's okay. We add a little cream because I like a sauce that actually sticks to my noodles. And this is cultured non-fat buttermilk. And then we have some of this wonderful, wonderful yogurt that I use in the place of sour cream and I season it and it's so good. I'm gonna take about two dollops of that. You don't need much. It's just a thicken. It a little, but we don't want to get too thick. Start mixing all these ingredients together first, all right? Get them all nice and coated there in the bottom of your roaster. My roaster can be used in saucepan because it gets extremely hot. In fact, we're going to turn it down just a notch till we get these shrimp in here. We don't need it at super, super, super speed heat right yet, all right? So, let me put these things back in the fridge because we're about to add wine. We're about to add that salsa made, and most importantly, we are definitely about to add the shrimp, which is the star of the show. So we're going to add, if you will, what I like to call <clears throat> lemon. <laughs> we're going to call this, let's see, what are we going to call it? Lemon mushroom pasta. <laughs> that sounds funny. But it is kind of what it tastes like. It is delicious. You can taste all the like lemon zest in it. I would never serve anyone something. Let me turn it this way. Or put you on this side. Pardon the dog. I would never serve people something without tasting it first. Like that's crazy to me. I think some people do that. And that's why they don't realize that what they're feeding tastes bad. You got to taste food before you give it to people. I don't care if you're just cooking for your family. You should still taste it. My goodness. I always thought more of my family than that. All right. So we want to not waste any of this because your butter is in here too. As it's cooking, you may find you need to add more butter to the recipe. In fact, I'm almost certain we will, but we're going to start at this point and just see how it goes going forward. Don't want to over butter in the beginning. All right. Get it all in there. Let me show it to you so you can see what it looked like. It's like a mushroom and lemon pesto butter. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and turn this water on and get my food processor soaking while we're doing this. So I can clean it in a minute. Move all the clean stuff to the other thing. Alright. So again, we're just stirring this in. I can move this back over now. i get my tripod hella dirty. Alright, so now we're just Mixing all these things, all these components together. And you want to let that just melt down into a nice, nice, nice sauce. You cannot mix scampi, folks. I guess there probably is a non-alcoholic version, but... And my hands are giving me hell trying to open this. Turn the water off. You want to add your wine. It needs to be white wine, folks. White wine, please. All right. Again, I'm making a pretty good amount of these. So I'm going with two small. These are not full-size bottles of wine. These are like single, you're just drinking it real quick, size things of wine. Two for me in there. All right. So... Some people, and they're not wrong, would let the alcohol cook out first. <clears throat> and you can do that. Or you can just do like we do back home in Maryland and cook your seafood and your alcohol. And that's the way we're doing it today. So I'm going to turn this up some now. We've got all the other ingredients in. Use your finger to taste. Oh, yeah. You can definitely taste the lemon. And once we put the shrimp in here, we're also going to put those fresh lemons on top. And we're just going to close it and let it do its thing for a while. So, let me get the shrimp. <clears throat> they are definitely done marinating. Like I said, you don't want to over marinate seafood ever. Not ever, ever, ever. Take them. 
Get all those flavors, all your mojo, your seafood seasoning. I just get it all in there. Throw your bags away as you go. Make your life easier at the end of your cooking. Definitely so. And let me show you what we got here. Look at that. And I'm just gonna stir those in now and cover them. But first, we're gonna spread them out and add the lemons on top. So just spread them out nice and flat. Mix them into your mixture, of course. Then pat them flat. All right. <clears throat> Like that. <clears throat> and you just want to take and place your lemons in here. Get the taste of this lemon all throughout. And also you can then have some of the cooked lemons in your plate as well even though we're also going to garnish with lemon lobster tail and a king crab leg per plate as well as some steamed broccoli all right <clears throat> and to be honest with you i might steam the broccoli in here near the end um it'll make it easier and less cleanup it's a good thing about having a nice big pot all right so we're gonna get that in there <clears throat> All right, we'll move the cutting board here real quick. And I'm just going to show you it. And there you go. Be back when it's ready to go. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and start getting the pasta itself going. All right, be back in a bit. Okay, so we've had some time pass here. I've got some butter, water, and garlic melting here so we can get ready to poach lobster. We've got linguine going here, not fresh made. Yes, I do have a machine, but I was not going through all of that today. <clears throat> and the steamer pot, let me show you. In the steamer pot, we have our king crab legs. And I'm about to place these broccoli florets in with that. Just gonna let it all steam together. Find ways to cut your time when you can. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna let that do its thing. I just wanna kinda show you that. And then we're gonna take us a little walk over here. And that's how the scampi's coming on. I've just got it on keep warm now because it's actually done. So now we're just waiting on our seafood and our pasta, and I will be plating soon. All right. Hey, guys. So just had like a kitchen blooper. Not so much a kitchen blooper as that I'm not happy with how the plating was going. So I'm going to do it differently because, well, I want it right. <clears throat> Did not like how that was going at all, how it was looking. So starting over. Sorry for that. <clears throat> so, let me draw this plate first. <clears throat> I think some pasta dishes probably really would do well with what I was trying to do, but because of how the consistency of scampi is, I would rather make like a well in the middle of the pasta for it. than the original way I was going to do it so that the shrimp have a nice little pretty place to sit. Now I'll be right back again.
You know what's funny? What I forgot, there was one more step of dinner, and I'll do that now just for my family. But y'all have seen my, my uh, garlic bread before, and all I'm doing is taking store-bought garlic bread and basically um, breaking it, cutting it, rather, would be a better term, into sections. And then... Um, just adding cheese and some more fresh garlic to the top of it. So with this, I want to place those just like that. I feel like that makes a prettier plate than what we were doing a few minutes ago. You can see I got the shrimp pie up. And then the last and most beautiful portion is just sitting that right on top, just like so. You can add another fresh onion. I mean, not onion. I keep saying onion. It's lemon, folks. You can add another fresh lemon right there. And then <clears throat> just a few sprigs of fresh parsley. Just a few. Not too much. <clears throat> now normally I would have had fresh grated parmesan but that particular store did not have any today so that was not a possibility for today and then just, just a very slight just drizzle of cheese you don't even need much because cheese is not the star here we forgot one important thing, didn't we? That beautiful broccoli floret. Now, I'm gonna move this out the way. I'm gonna turn this around so y'all can really see what it looks like. <clears throat> Be right back. All right, so here we have it. The shrimp scampi, you wanna get on in there so you can see all of that. See your lemons, your fresh parsley. It's served along with a beautiful king crab leg, not frozen, and a poached lobster. And I also created like a butter sauce for dipping the lobster in it. It's just not pictured here, but I'll be back in a sec with an actual photo of the plate. 